Uh, I'm Todd Gitlin. I teach here communication, sociology, communications. I do want to make a couple of quick observations that new technologies are weaponized. Sometimes they begin in weaponized uh, form. So the very early experiments in radio, for example, uh, the UK and the US government were involved in making sure that radio would be used to suit their na respective national security principles. And that takes us to the, the subject of this panel, which is cybersecurity. So with no further ado, what I'm going to do is just very quickly name our panelists. Uh, Robert Jervis, to my immediate left, is the Adlai Stevenson Professor of International Politics in the Department of Political Science here, past president of the Political Science Association, and the author of many books, including one whose title seems apropos, Perception and Misperception in International Politics. There are a number of things about the cyber world, I think, that are, I find, dangerous and potentially destabilizing. The first is that for most cyber tools, this is, again, in international conflict, it's very hard to distinguish offensive measures or potentially offensive measures <laughs> from what's normally seen as legitimate and often defensive, which is espionage, spying. Countries spy on each other, you know, time immemorial, you find it in the Bible, you also find, if you know your Old Testament, that the spies that Moses sent uh, came back with totally fallacious information, so very little changes. So cyber is now extraordinarily important in America and, and I'm sure every country's intelligence. You try not only to intercept messages and decode them, you try to sort of get in the other side's net, sit on his network, and get the information, ex extract it the way the Russians did with the uh, DNC and uh, Hillary's emails. And countries are doing this on the industrial scale. That's considered unpleasant, uh, but legitimate and in some way defensive because you're partly uh, protecting yourself. The trouble is when you penetrate the other side's nets to get information, you also are in a position to disrupt and destroy. The only difference between espionage and disruptive attack is what's at the the payoff, the package at the end. And you as a defender can't know that until it's too late. So offense and defense are very hard to distinguish here. And that can easily lead to spirals of escalation and outcomes that no one wants. A second troublesome aspect is um, that Leaders are even less experienced than I am about dealing with cyber things. I grant I couldn't turn on the microphone, but most of our leaders can't even turn on, uh, you know, their computers. That they, if we get in a, I don't know what happened in Estonia, which interesting, course, but I think if we get a cyber attack in the U.S even if we had more qualified leaders, and I think we do now, they wouldn't know what was happening. The people who understand it at a technical and political level have to con would have to convey an enormous amount of information that's difficult to get your brain around to people who've <laughs> probably sat through three PowerPoint presentations and not paid attention. I'd be interested to know, since Estonia's been attacked, if your leaders stay awake in the presentations and can understand them. Because most of the briefers are used to talking to people who understand it. And when I hear them, I have to stop them every two minutes. What's that acronym? Acronym, what is that? You know, the gap between the people who know and the leaders is enormous, and that will be a problem. Also, if there's a crisis, the leaders will be functioning perhaps with degraded communication systems or communication systems they can't quite trust. I'm seeing something on my computer screen, 
but is it really what you know, I'm getting from the Pentagon or is it what the Russians have hacked into? This is what we, uh, again, not used to that. Another problem, and I'll stop, is that the role of third parties is much greater than in normal conflict. The, uh, it's third part, in the US at least, and I assume in all the West European countries, the, t the bulk of the targets of cyber attacks are not the government, although it's got, Matt, we know, got plenty, but it's the banks, uh, large companies, you know, that they're on the front lines. And the attackers often are well, hacktivists, that is, they're people who are, have political motives, but they're not government officials, or they may just be pure criminals, or they may be criminals hired by governments. And when you get an attack, in many cases, you know, who, attribution in this sense, not in the sense of where are the computers that started this, but who is it and what are the motives are difficult. And also, the companies under attack, and they're under attack, are, have a, are really teched up, and there's great temptation to go hack back, that is to take offensive actions to try to disrupt or destroy the computers that are attacking them. That is illegal in the US, and it, Matt, in other countries? Most countries. Most countries. Uh, and the banks swear in in public that they're not doing this. Uh, are they doing it? <coughs> Matt knows but can't tell us. Uh, but in any event, if they're not, my guess is they will. So that's another layer of complexity. Final one is the recent change in the American policy ratified by Cyber Command and the Trump administration. Uh, which I'll make a long story, which I don't fully understand, very short, is a much more assertive, and they say it's assertive, that is much more trying to meet attacks forward, that is in third party computers. And the Trump administration, uh, the Obama administration highly centralized, I say highly centralized, everything, highly centralized decisions on use of cyber tools, and the Trump administration has delegated that much further down. There are things to be said for this, but obviously it raises the, div the danger that people three, four levels down in the chain of command will do things without understanding the full implications, without understanding the ramifications, without understanding the political context, without uh, informing fully the top people and the chances for undesired escalation coming out of that are quite large. 